Welcome to the workshop of Dionysus. I'm Barnaby Brown and in this video I'm going to be talking about vibrato. So in recent months I've been having conversations with an Australian composer, Austin Ha, and he's been it's been really enriching. Um, it's made me think about what I am doing and what I want to do um, as an Aulos player. And um, it's, I suppose, opened my imagination um, and made me start practicing <laughs> because Austin wants me to do all these things that I hadn't practiced. Um, and I'm not yet good at all the types of vibrato I'm going to demonstrate, um, so please bear with me. But thinking about vibrato has been immensely valuable and this is really a report of, of those thoughts which will be ongoing. Um, this video has four parts. I'm going to begin um, with a sort of taxonomy of vibrato for the aulos, um, thinking about the world of vibrato and how many different types there are. Uh, then I'm going to demonstrate them. Um, first on uh, on a classical professional instrument, the sort of aulos that would have accompanied a dithyram in the 6th and 5th century BC um, or Attic tragedy. Um, and then I'm also going to look at vibratos on a rustic aulos. This is um, effectively a Sardinian launedas without the drone. Um, and then I'm going to go a little bit deeper and look at some uh, less obvious aspects um, of vibrato um, on, on both of these types of aulos, uh, winding up with uh, a reflection on cultural bias um, and what sort of aulos revival we want. Okay, so let's begin with a taxonomy of vibrato. Now, um, Oh, we thought long and hard about this because it boils down to notation and I was demonstrating um, things that were possible on, on the Aulos um, by Zoom uh, between Cambridge in the UK and uh, Sydney, Australia. Um, and Austin and I um, sort of narrowed it down um, initially to six uh, types of vibrato and I've sort of pared that down further to five. So, okay, so it's, it's manageable with five types of vibrato. Um, but let's think of it as a world of vibrato and, and these are really five continents. Now, some of them are bigger than others um, and some of them we share with lots of other musicians um, and, and one of them we don't. One of them is our own special little Aulos island. Um, but I'll get to that last. First of all, uh, the main one, uh, the most common sort of vibrato is diaphragm vibrato. Ha! 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 You, uh, um, I suppose, uh, it's like laughing. Ha! 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 Might be fast. Ha! 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 Might be slower. Or it's like crying. Ha! 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 A slow sob. Now, this, of course, the emotional aspect of music is, is, is tremendously important. So, as an Aulos player, we want to be able to sob and cry and laugh and chuckle. Um, and vibrato does that for us. Um, so, that's diaphragm vibrato. Now the next one, um, again there are lots of types here, um, um, I'm going to call it arm vibrato. Um, and I thought long and hard about this, um, but uh, uh, let's call it arm vibrato because fundamentally um, it's it's you're moving the pipe in and out of the mouth a tiny amount because that little movement makes a big difference to the pitch um, and arm vibrato um, it's actually much much more um, nuanced and, and sophisticated than that because um, you can move your hand up and down as well as in and out and that has the same sort of effect um, but I've, I've differentiated it from mouth movement of muscles here uh, because the muscles are in the arm or in the hand um, so it's it's the mechanical uh, a differentiation there but it sounds very similar to and can easily be integrated with mouth vibrato and again so this is our third island or uh, category of vibrato um, now there are an awful lot of muscles here uh, uh, and so many different ways of doing it um, um, you can move your chin muscle 
uh, you can move your lip muscles, squeezing the reed, um, um, adjusting the compression, um, high compression, low compression, um, without any in and out of the arm. And it's a really good thing to practice that. Just training that embouchure, squeezing more and less. Um, and then there's jaw movement. And that's from the hinge back here. And that, of course, changes the reed compression. So mouth is really a whole package, a complex, rich package of different ways of, of making the sound wobble. Um, uh, the fourth uh, type of vibrato is finger vibrato. And again, there are an awful lot of ways of doing it. Uh, you can slightly uh, leak, okay, just wiggle the finger, um, uh, and maybe at the back, uh, um, a, a little leak opens and that raises the pitch. Um, or you can slightly cover the hole. Um, and just that, um, you know, you're not completely covering the hole, but you're, uh, they change you, that flattens the pitch. Um, and then uh, there's also, instead of covering the immediate hole, um, this one here, you can cover the next hole down or two of them. And so, and there you can cover the whole hole and that that's um, a different sound again. So three sort of nations within that continent um, of finger vibrato. And finally, our own little Aulos Island. No other musicians that to my knowledge um, are here. Um, it's because we've got two pipes. And with two pipes um, that have a very similar timbre, if you sound the same note, a unison, and then slightly detune them, you get interference beats. And you can control the speed of those interference beats um, uh, expressively. So that's why I, I would include that as a type of vibrato. Now, the sixth type of vibrato that I sort of felt mm, doesn't quite feel like a vibrato, um, is when you do a timbral transition. Um, and, and you can get a timbral transition kind of up to vibrato speed, but you can't make it glisten and shimmer. So you don't, it, it doesn't quite feel the same. It's sort of in approaching a vibrato. Um, but I've, I've done a separate video on timbral transitions because they're important in their own right. Um, so there we go. I've, I've, I've boiled it down for practical purposes to five types of vibrato, um, and they're all very different. Now, let's demonstrate. Um, I'm going to do uh, uh, the same phrase for each vibrato type so you can compare them. This is the Pidna Aulos, made for me by Robin Howell in Toronto from Scottish Deerburn. But my very kind father helped me to macerate and clean because we got it um, from the from the, the keepers who, who um, cull deer in Scotland. Uh, so it was quite a smelly operation. diaphragm vibrato and for the purposes of demonstration I'm I'm doing four different types uh, and on the first uh, 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 four notes and on each note I'll do a different thing um, so on the first uh, uh, vibrato note uh, the the minor second I was turning up the presence going from absent to subtly present to noticeable, to prominent, to over the top. Um, and then I went up to the fourth, 
um, and at the top of the phrase, um, I maybe I was thinking of, of lament, and so um, going from a from a shimmer to a, a crying, to a sobbing, to a throbbing, to find peace. And then I descend down to the, the major third at the bottom. And, um, and there I do the opposite. I'm going to turn up the speed, going from still to swaying, to laughing, to chuckling, to sparkling. Um, and then I come back to finish on a unison. And on that unison, I'm going to turn down the presence. So I'll start, um, let's say, possessed or ecstatic um, and then I'll turn down uh, the the presence or the temperature to heated to warm to melting to ice cold so that's what I'm doing in my mind um, on these four notes so that was vibrato type number one diaphragm vibrato now moving on to arm vibrato. I'll do the first two with my right arm and the second two with my left arm. And I'm moving in closer so that you can see what's happening hopefully um, up the lip because what matters with arm vibrato is this little in and out motion although it might also be with the thumb pushing up and down. next one is mouth vibrato. Oh, so many different ways of doing it. Now with mouth vibrato there, um, you have to be careful that you're not uh, too much at the oxypugnon end of the reed because then it stops. So I'm going to just alter my reed placement and do that one again. So I'm now playing nearer the tips of the reed. So I've got more room to, to do that mouth vibrato. vibrato is fantastic really I'm I'm looking forward to having sort of figured out what I might want to practice um, I'm now starting my practicing so what you're hearing here is is kind of um, very experimental um, it's not settled um, uh, it, all you know keeping the speed the same and turning down the presence or turning up the presence with a steady tempo or um, um, keeping the presence of the vibrato the same and turning down the speed or turning up the speed. Um, these things um, are, it's like going to the gym. Um, you train hard and my training is only just beginning. So I will be making another video, maybe six months from now, um, where I, uh, it'll be, I'm interested to see, okay, how much, how far can I travel in six months? 
Um, fine. The next type of vibrato um, is uh, our own special Aulos one, interference beats. So. subtle. To make them a bit more obvious you need to pull out. Pull out so that instead of producing that refined, slightly thinner um, oxypugnon tone um, or ligudos tone, you pull out to produce the slack sound. I'll also go down a note. Um, hopefully you could hear those interference beats getting faster until it's out of tune and then gradually as you tune those two pipes together um, uh, it slows down to nothing. So that's interference beat vibrato. Uh, let's just uh, uh, look at the sixth vibrato that didn't make it into my list, um, um, t a timbral vibrato. Um, I'll do my best. But, um, I mean, it potentially could, with a lot of practice, this could enter the vibrato realm. I mean, I love it as a, as a timbral transition, but as a vibrato, let's say that it's not high value for effort. Um, and uh, with limited time, um, I've only got one lifetime, um, I want to become really good at vibrato and um, uh, with five types to practice and within each of those five types, so, so many different parameters, um, I'm not going to spend time on timbral vibrato. I'm going to work on timbral transitions and I'm going to explore those five types of vibrato and probably narrow it down. Um, um, but I don't yet know which ones I'm going to home in on um, because uh, it's a bit like being multilingual. Um, at the moment with the Aulos Revival we've got a wonderful clean slate um, we don't know, I certainly don't know, um, what type of vibrato they were using in the 6th century BC. Um, and I suspect that it changed, that, that new fashions came in and different people did things at different times and in different places. Um, so, it's, it, it would be lovely, I think, in the you know, Aulos Revival to keep it diverse. Now, moving on to what uh, things that aren't immediately obvious about these different vibrato types. Um, and uh, they're very obvious to me, or they become obvious to me practicing them. Um, uh, but you wouldn't know about this, and I'm, I'm suppose I'm a, here I'm addressing composers. Um, uh, uh, that's one of the, the, it's incredibly valuable to collaborate with a composer because uh, yes, I've been trying to explain what can this instrument do to um, Austin Ha in Sydney. Um, and by doing that, I have learnt what this instrument can do. Um, so with, with uh, these vibratos, let's first of all think about breathing. 
On the Aolos, you, you circular breathe. Um, and, and that involves taking air in through the nose while it comes out your mouth. Now, diaphragm vibrato, you can't do while air is coming in through your nose because um, the, uh, the variation in air pressure um, is blocked um, uh, while you use the reservoir in your cheek to send the air out. So every time you breathe, you stop the vibrato, which is actually aggravating. Um, um, uh, you could kind of manage it so that you don't do any vibrato when you need to breathe, but it's not ideal. So that's one of the drawbacks of diaphragm vibrato. Um, one of its advantages is that it doesn't bend the pitch. If you don't like a big pitch wobble in your vibrato, then diaphragm is what you want because it, it's more about the, a, a, a wobble in the loudness. Um, although there can be plenty of pitch component in it as well. Okay, so that's one of the um, aspects of, of, of breathing. Um, if we move to the others, they can all... They can, you can have them all going while you take air in through your nose. So, so that gives them a distinct advantage um, uh, um, when breathing. Um, the next parameter uh, to consider is independence of pipes. Now, um, this becomes relevant where you're maybe just holding uh, um, uh, or, or having a conversation between your two pipes. And if you're able to do vibrato on one pipe only, wow, it makes a big difference to the polyphonic uh, separation. And um, with diaphragm, no good at all. <laughs> Inevitably, whatever you do with your diaphragm affects both pipes. Uh, so no polyphonic separation there. With um, mouth vibrato, you can sort of do some separation. Um, um, I'll, I'll demonstrate because I, I, uh, um, you, you, you have to do this uh, to fine tune. Uh, in other words, you're, you're adjusting one side of your embouchure um, and not the other. Um, so. <laughs> So I can get a semitone pitch bend there on either side of my mouth, uh, just by sort of dropping to one side. Um, to make that a vibrato is quite a lot of practice, and it's, let's say it's not very good value for effort. Um, much, much more control is his arm. Okay, so arm gives you real polyphonic separation. Um, I prefer lip vibrato sonically. I think it's much more e economic. Um, uh, Practising, I think my left hand is not anything like as competent as my right hand. A bit like thumbs. My thumbs are not as competent as my fingers. So in terms of practising, uh, uh, the dear old thumbs require ten times as much time um, uh, uh, and care in the practising. Likewise, my left hand, my goodness, I've already been practising just these last weeks. Um, arm vibrato on my left hand ten times as much as my right. <sighs> uh, it's a problem of being right-handed. Um, so, um, uh, that's, those are the main uh, uh, differences, factors, uh, that uh, um, aren't immediately obvious. Um, I'd like to move now to the rustic aulos. Uh, pop my reed caps on to protect the reeds. Uh, very important indeed. Um, and the rustic aulos... Um, with with double reeds, uh, sorry, uh, uh, this professional aulos um, has reeds that are squeezed um, from a single tube, um, but the, uh, so it looks like a bassoon um, uh, or a, a bagpipe reed. Um, got two blades, so it's called a double reed. Um, whereas with the Sardinian launerdas, um, what you have. Um, are, are single reeds, um, which are again a tube of cane slit, and it uh, um, goes up and down a bit like a 
bit like a clarinet. The sound is totally different. You've got absolutely no control over the volume. It's just loud. <laughs> They're wonderful, wonderful instruments. I love them dearly. Wild. Um, so this, uh, uh, um, this is an instrument I made for Austin for his piece, and he christened it the Dissonance Avalos. Um, uh, so it's simply uh, um, two pipes a tone apart. So you could play it like this. in uh, parallel seconds. Um, but what I'm going to do to demonstrate vibrato um, is, is go through these types again and see if we can do them all. Diaphragm. Yeah, very nicely. Um, and this reed is closing up a little bit. It is a brand new instrument, so I just need to, to give it a little flick. And hopefully that will stay open now. Um, so arm vibrato, I can tell you right now, it doesn't work because, because um, um, they just stop. The reeds stop. If I... No change in the sound. Um, forget it. Um, mouth vibrato? No, again, these are these are solid things. They just it just doesn't happen. Um, finger, oh, I forgot to demonstrate finger vibrato on on the professional aulos. Uh, but let's do finger vibrato on this one instead. So that is partially covering. That's partially uncovering. And that is covering a lower finger hole. So those are the sort of the three basic types of finger vibrato. Um, and they work beautifully. Um, so there we go. I'll just demonstrate finger vibrato on the professional aulos. Uh, because it's it's a uh, very different, a very uh, 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 different land to inhabit, and a beautiful one. Um, waggling the finger, slightly leaking. Partially covering. So not completely covering the hole, just a little bit. Um, I'm hitting a lower finger hole. My favourite, I have to be honest, is waggling the finger. That's what they do in the Balkans a lot. All Caval and Gaida players, uh, they waggle the fingers, and it's a it's a great a great technique. Um, so so there we go. Um, those are the five vibrato types, um, and I will just round off now with a reflection on the opportunity 
that the Aulos revival uh, presents uh, to wake up to something terribly important, which is cultural bias. And vibrato is a rather brilliant vehicle to wake us up to our own perspective because um, inevitably we our brains are are shaped by our upbringing by the household we've grown up in and we tend all human beings we're very tribal um, we we inevitably as a result of exposure and training uh, we end up um, believing that some things are right and other things are wrong <laughs> but of course what's right in this culture might be wrong in another and vice versa so with vibrato i'd like to invite all our lost players to really think about about creating a level playing field and not uh, uh, looking negatively on a different, unfamiliar sort of vibrato. Uh, so that we really, we're welcoming. All vibratos are welcome in the Aulos revival. That's the kind of revival I'd like to belong to. And it doesn't mean that I will continue to practice all types. I will probably home in. Um, it's pragmatic. Uh, I'll decide, oh, I like these ones. Um, but if I'm doing this and another Aros player is doing that, I'd encourage you to do something else again so that, so that we have diversity. And it'll be more interesting uh, for uh, the people listening to us. It means that everyone has their own particular sound and we can really cultivate different schools, different traditions, different ways of, of making this instrument beautiful. Because ultimately, vibrato is giving it life. It's giving it spirit. It kind of creates something terribly precious in the sound. So I'd say that um, actually vibrato is possibly the most important thing to practice. Thank you for listening. Do join us if you are interested in the Aulos. Uh, the Workshop of Dionysus meets every fortnight on a Sunday evening by Zoom. You can be anywhere on the planet and if the time zone doesn't suit you, we will create a meeting um, at a time that's convenient for you. So get in touch by uh, just leave a comment on our website doublepipes.info Thank you for watching.